and welcome to the Brazilian American Chamber of Commerce's webinar in conjunction with the Brazilian Consulate entitled Celebrating Coffee, the World's Drink. Thank you all for attending. I am John Welch, Executive Director of the Brazilian American Chamber. And on behalf of the Chamber, we wish you all health and happiness during this lovely fall. Coffee brings people together and is celebrated across the globe. Today is National Coffee Day in the United States. Brazilians celebrate coffee on May 24th and the International Coffee Day established by the International Coffee Organization is, falls on October 1st. So we can celebrate three times a year. Historically, and in Brazil's history, of course, coffee figured very importantly, especially after, in the 20th century. Coffee was the backbone of the Brazil's economy for over a century. It led to the creation of Banespa and a no, number of other things in the 1920s. Our predecessor, the Brazilian American Society, also started in the 1920s, almost 100 years ago, as a meeting place for Brazilian and American traders and investors. And, uh, and coffee, of course, was one of the main issues to discuss in 1927. Today, Brazil remains one of the world's leading producers, exporters, and consumers of coffee, investing in environmental sustainability, product quality, and social responsibility in the coffee chain. To celebrate this popular drink, yeah, a drink that's close to me as well, we will hear from a uh, number of important stakeholders in Brazil, their views on the future of the coffee industry, and basically uh, in Brazil and globally. Our moderator today is Bruno Graça Simões, Head of Agribusiness and Trade and Investment at the uh, General uh, Council General of Brazil in New York City. He has also traded, uh, also headed the Trade and Investment Promotion at the Council, uh, Council of General of Brazil in Hong Kong, China. A diplomat since 2010, he started his career as an assistant in the Market Access Division, where he contributed to the 2013 Trade Facilitation Agreement and took part in customs and trade related negotiations. Mr. Graça Simões graduated from the Universidad de São Paulo uh, in 2006, and in 2010 earned a master's degree in international law from USP's Law School. He will return to Brazil shortly to work in the Agribusiness Promotion Division at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You can find Bruno's full bio and those of our panelists on the reminder sent yesterday and on the Chamber website. Before I hand it over to Bruno, I'd like you all to uh, please, if you have questions, to use the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen. I'll send reminders out during the, the webinar. Uh, and we'll, 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 everyone will see your questions and we'll deal with them either in the dis full discussion or at the end of the and during a Q&A period. Bruno? Thank you, John. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, happy Coffee Day to Americans. Yesterday, 29th September, was the American Coffee Day. And happy International Coffee Day for tomorrow, uh, Friday, October the 1st, is the International Coffee Day. Uh, I welcome you to this webinar to celebrate the coffee. Uh, we are all here around a good cup of coffee to talk about this great beverage so strongly associated with Brazil and the USA. As a drink you know for sharp in the mind, coffee was part of the economic and social development of both Brazil and the USA. In Brazil, Coffee plantations financed from early on the industrialization process of Brazil, the transformation of our impoverished agrarian society into a modern industrial nation. The first cycle of industrialization in Brazil were financed with revenue from coffee exports. It's so important that in Brazil, the current expression for breakfast will translate as morning coffee. In USA, coffee fooled the working class into work every day. It was the main source of mind energy for millions of workers building this country into an economic powerhouse it is nowadays. Uh, in a personal note, uh, I think that all my family, all the generations of my family have been involved into the coffee economy somehow, from uh, small farmers uh, in the 19th century to people working uh, with coffee right now and with me promoting coffee in, uh, in webinars like this one today. Uh, and the numbers for the Brazilian coffee, they are very impressive. Brazil is one of the biggest producers one of the biggest exporters and one of the biggest consumers. USA is the biggest importer and of course, one of the biggest uh, consumers. Today, we have about 260,000 coffee producers in Brazil, mostly small business. And about 15 to 20% of Brazilian coffee already has achieved socio environmental certification. In some regions, 20 to 30% of the coffee farms 
are operated by women. These are just some numbers of many that will be discussed here uh, that show the changing that is happening in Brazil. Coffee is still changing Brazil and is still changing in Brazil from large plantations of the 19th century into a small owner in fish efficient farms improving product quality and social sustainability in the 21st century. Uh, today, we are gonna listen to uh, people from three sectors of the coffee economic complex. Uh, Vanusia Nogueira, the director of the Brazilian Specialty Coffee Association, will talk to us about the uh, sustainability uh, aspect of the production of coffee. Uh, Marcos Antonio Mato, CEO of the Coffee Exporters Council of Brazil, Secafé, will talk about the perspective of the traders, the exporters of coffee. And Sergio Pereira, president and CEO of the Companhia Cacique de Café Solúvel, will talk about uh, the perspective of the industry of coffee, not only Eastern coffee, but of the industry as a whole. Uh, we hope this webinar will help improve the knowledge about the Brazilian coffee, as well as allow you to know the many initiatives under work to make it more sustainable, both for local producers and for the environment. My best wishes. Thank you very much. I'll give you Vanusia. Okay, good morning to everyone. Uh, let's celebrate the Coffee Day. It's national. Yesterday it was the, the national and tomorrow will be the international Coffee Day. Then we can have three days following the coffees uh, worldwide. And this is very nice. For us in Brazil, this is very important. And uh, because as uh, Bruno said, uh, we have here a very huge production of coffee in a very traditional and cultural uh, environment for coffee here in Brazil. I will share my screen right now to show to you some slides. Uh, well, we will talk about Brazil, the coffee nation. Why the coffee nation? Because uh, for us, coffee is more than a plantation or a crop. It's uh, something that, uh, as Bruno said, uh, we produce, we export, and also we consume. Uh, Brazil is the second biggest uh, consumer, uh, coffee consumer in the world. And we do all of the things and uh, for plantation, for production, industry, and also consumption with quality and sustainability. The SCA, the Brazil Specialty Coffee Association, it's uh, an association that was created 30 years ago, and it's a nonprofit organization. Uh, the goals of uh, BSCA are to increase the quality of the production here in Brazil since the beginning, uh, three decades ago, and also to offer these products to the world and also to the Brazilian consumers. Uh, the second goal of BSCA is to certify and promote the quality of the Brazilian specialty coffees. And this uh, was what we are talking now. Here in this slide, you can see the Brazilian map. All the colors that we have inside of the Brazilian map are regions that we have coffees. It's very important to say that in Brazil, we have two species of coffee. We have the Arabica coffee, and also we have the Robusta coffees that we call uh, Canepura coffees. All the colors that we have here, we have or, uh, Robusta or Arabica coffees from south to north of Brazil. And uh, it's important to mention that from uh, smallholders to big farmers, more than 70% of the coffee produce, uh, produced in Brazil are uh, come from uh, smallholders. Uh, a smallholder here in Brazil, it's uh, that um, producer that has less than 10 uh, hectares of coffee in, in uh, his property or her property. And what are the key points of the production here in Brazil? Sustainability, consistency, uh, quality, and diversity. Sustainability, why? Because we are a very huge sustainable country for agribusiness. And we can offer to the markets 
30% of the certified coffee in the world. This is the coffee that we offer to the market as a sustainable coffee. Consistency. Because of the volume that we have here in Brazil, we can deliver similar blends every year. We know that coffee is a fruit and we have different from, co from crop to crop, from season to season. But we can offer to the, indus the industry similar blends every year because of the huge volume that we have. The quality of the Brazilian coffee. Many people doesn't know about that, but we have very, very high quality coffees here in Brazil, including the record uh, score of the Cup of Excellence competition that is the most recognized uh, quality coffee competition in the world. This record uh, was uh, taken in 2005, in 2005 here in South of Minas, Gerais, and this is still the world record in the world. And we have also diversity. From north to south, we have coffees, and then from this, we have very different terroirs here in Brazil. And you can uh, show, and you can select, we can show the, the coffees, the variety and the diversity of the coffees here in Brazil to all of the consumers in the world. And each consumer can uh, select which coffee fits better with your palate, okay? And uh, we also can talk about the coffee cycle. Here we have uh, in Brazil from the seed, and then we can go to all chain of the coffee and goes to the consumer. And uh, we have all the steps, all the links of the chain uh, present here in Brazil, and we can offer to the world uh, the green coffees, and also we can offer to the world the instant coffees, the soluble coffees, and also the ground coffees. And in our days, we are working very hard here in Brazil uh, with the ASG concepts and the circular economy. And why we are doing that? Because climate change, it's a reality, and we need to take care of the climate. We need to take care of our environment. We need to take care of our producers and also of our the regions that we are having coffees here in Brazil. And together we can offer a better world and we can have a better planet to be. This is the what I would like to say for introduce our uh, subject today, and I will give up the give the the word to the, to Bruno or to John. Thank you, thank you, Venusia. Uh, it's very nice to see this beautiful map uh, showing all the terroirs and all the regions that produce coffee in, in Brazil. I love this map. I, I wish I had a poster of this in my room. And I think the consulate should have something like this permanently for people to know where the coffee is coming from, right? Yeah. Uh, when I was doing my research, I had the impression that if Minas Gerais was a country, it would be the biggest producer and the second would be Brazil, right? It's so huge a production that uh, uh, of so different kinds of coffee that is a world in itself, only one state. And when you see the others, Espírito Santo, uh, São Paulo, uh, Bahia, even Rondônia, right? Uh, producing different uh, uh, brands and different terroirs. This is amazing. Very, mm -hmm. very nice. Uh, and this map, Bruno, just to, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. this map is available in, in our website and uh, anyone can get there and, uh, and print it. I think I'll ask the chamber if they allow me to send the, uh, the, this, this image as a gift for those participating in the meeting today. Uh, for sure. I'll, I'll talk mm -hmm. to John later. Uh, okay. But now that the cough has been sustainably produced, it needs to be sold and part of it will be exported, right? So uh, let's hear a little bit about the perspective of the exporters of Brazil. So Marcos Antonio, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Bruno. Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to take part in this important event that we are celebrating the National Coffee Day and tomorrow the International Coffee Day. Coffee is our part of the history and the part of culture in Brazil. So I'm going to share my presentation, just one minute.
I hope it's okay. Let's see, just to say a, a little bit about Secafé, Secafé, the Brazilian Coffee Council. We represent the 95% of the Brazilian coffee exports. We are 121 members, cooperatives, national companies, uh, global companies. So we represent the trade flow in the world and the national markets in the same way. So uh, it's interesting to, to remember that the previous information uh, when Luza showed about our production, uh, Brazil is a continental country. The map that she mentioned is very interesting. A continental, continental country, variety of climates, conditions, regions, soils. So it's resulted in a diversity of our production in Brazil. I'll put some highlights in this uh, slide that I think it's so important to mention. Uh, it's Brazil, uh, it's from 1960 to the current last season, 2020, Brazil jumped from six bags per hectare by 33.5 bags per hectare. It's 415% yet increase. And we reduce it, the planted area, 55%. This is sustainability. And some records, the season 2020, it was a record for us in volume, in quality and sustainability. So it brings us all the records in civil year and the crop year in the same way. And we export for 147 countries in the last five years. Brazil, of course, the first producer, the first export and the second one in the consumer. Some highlights, I think it's important information. Bruno and Vanusa mentioned about Brazilian profile, the agricultural census in Brazil that 265,000 farmers, according to our last census, 72% below 20 hectares, it's family agriculture. But according to our government, when we analyze not just the size of the planted area, but incomes and other varieties, variables, 78% of those farmers are family business, are small farmers, and they have access the rural credit books for small farmers. It's interesting to mention. And coffee is part of history, but nowadays is the number five in our export products in Brazil. It's still important for our economy, for our society, and for our environment. I bring some information about our exports, just to remember that Secafé is it's, uh, it's responsible for the certificates of orange in Brazil. We are the coordinator of the emission of that certificates. It's an international agreement that Brazil is taking part. And our Brazilian coffee export database and statistics are very accurate. Monthly, we publish our export report. So 2020, the season that we mentioned, bring us the records. So 44.7 million bags in the senior year. It's for us, it's a huge number. And it's important to mention, uh, even during the pandemic, the worst part of the pandemic, Brazilian agribusiness, it's including the coffee sector, we manage that and organized, and we were, have been organizing the fictions in the, this process. We promoted national campaigns, educa educational book lists, private protocols, warehouses, harvest, post-harvest, ports, to manage that risks that we were carried out. So some continents, it's, uh, and, uh, it's important to mention that uh, Europe is the biggest one. When we analyze country, USA is the first country, the biggest consumer and the most important country for Brazil, uh, analyzing our exports. North America as a continent is the second one. And of course, just to mention several countries, USA, I mentioned the first one, Germany, Belgium, Italy, Japan, Turkey, and Russia, Mexico, Spain, Canada, the biggest for our, according to our database. And that's important information I'd like to share. It's the differentiated coffees. The differentiated coffees are those can be clearly distinguished because of the sweet oranges, the finally process, exceptional characteristics of quality or certifications, quality, sustainability. So last year, a record 7.9 million bags, we increased the 44.4%. And uh, another information, when we analyze certifications that the qualities, 76% of that differentiated costs, quality, 
24% certifications for focused on sustainability. And some information about our marketing. When you analyze Brazil to export to USA, uh, USA, is, as we mentioned, is the biggest consumer of the drink and the biggest important coffee from Brazil. Almost 21% that we export to USA are differentiated coffees. Uh, in 2020, this differentiated coffees resulted in a price differential of around 30%. There are more information that we shows its sustainability. It's very important for farmers in Brazil. And last year, it's pandemic period. Of course, it's reflected in the USA imports. It's pandemic period decreased 10%, but at the same time, Brazil is still the number one and 31% of the, the it's large screen cop to USA, Brazil is still the number one. We have a share is 31% in USA market. We'd like to emphasize sustainability and social responsibility to our exports. Say uh, cafe and the coffee export sector have been investing for a long time in sustainability in several programs, focus on uh, communities, kids, young people in the rural areas, sustainable coffee farmer, a specific training for farmers. Uh, we are analyzing a balance, carbon balancing in Brazil for Arabic coffee and Conilon coffee, past residue monitoring program. We are, have been doing that for two years. This year is the biggest one in our history. We analyze the maximum residue limit in the different currents in the world and analyze that and our sustainability programs, we put that conscious educational for farmers. And just to uh, show some things, important things, that some of the main lines of the actions that Secafé and the export sector are involved in. And in 2016, Brazil coffee exporter established its code of ethics and conduct, a compliance landmark in which CKFM members seek to expand to the supply chain, the to total value chain, the principle of ethics and commitment with the country's current laws, social laws, environmental laws, all the principles and compliance. And it's important to mention the creation of the Brazilian coffee sustainable seal. Yeah, which aims to strengthen, recognize, and promote the Brazilian sustainability. In the economic pillar of sustainability, we have been monitoring the transfer price, FOB prices, export prices to farmers. It's, it is sustainability. In Brazil, 8.4% of the FOB export price transfer to farmers. It's important, it represents income for farmers. And remember the differentiate the costs, we add value 81.4% in average its income for farmers. In our social drive, it's for, we implemented 137 digital laboratories in rural areas, public schools in rural areas, focus on digital inclusion for kids, teachers, communities, employees, farmers, all of the community in the country. This map shows Brazil is a continental country, and that blue point here is each digital laboratory. We invested around $10 million for that initiative. And as we mentioned, the sustainable coffee farmer focus training farmers. 30% of around 7,000 farmers are women, but we are focused on digital inclusion and the best agricultural practice focus on the fundamental items of the coffee sustainability curriculum of Brazil. And the blue point, you can note where the train are, have been managing in Brazil. Coffee growing regions focus on best agricultural practice and digital inclusion. And it's a very important initiative. We started this year, many partners, roasters, international roasters, we are starting analyzing the balance of carbon in Brazil. We are analyzing many different regions for different production systems, realities, small farmers, mechanized irrigation, all of them with science, University of Sao Paulo, Ima Flora, and the other partners. We are analyzing, we are, the project will highlight the state of the art of the carbon balance 
in coffee production regions, as well outline recommendations and the strategies for improving the process because you analyze all the realities, south of Minas, Matas de Minas, Cerrado de Minas, and compare it in their huge knowledge in this context. And it's, it's a proud to mention the Human Development Index. It's the Municipal Human Development Index. Where is coffee? The Human Development Index is better. This index analyzes longevity, life expectancy, education, and income. There is a correlation, a positive correlation between planted area and this index. In this world, in other words, the large area of coffee uh, in the municipality, the better of the index. It means that the widespread consumption of Brazilian crops, even in USA, in the world, is an inducer of progress and human development in our producing countries. We are every time updating this information. And of course, not just Minas Gerais, but the entire country, analyzing including the jobs, the job creation. And other sustainability pillar in the social driver, it's a four-year product focused on social well-being. It's a multi-stakeholder engagement, Secafe, Global Coffee Platform, Impacto, and we analyze, we are focused on best, best practice in social area, the loss, the educational. We are seeking to improve the working condition, the living condition of coffee farmers and employees and create awareness and trigger changes to avoid degrading conditions in the Brazilian coffee chain. A four year project, many stakeholders implemented the work holders and this coffee export sector cooperatives, we are together because we, we understand that it's important issues when we are responsible to manage that subject in a positive context. And we are very responsible analyzing our exports, the pesticide residue monitoring in the three years nowadays when multi-residue and analyzing not just one or two, but all of them that we need, we have to use in coffee and analyze the regulation around the world. It creates knowledge and we apply in our social programs. So that's what we, that, that we mentioned coffee Brazil, we are sustainable. We, the consumption of our coffee improves and promote uh, uh, social responsibility and progress in our society. So value and enjoy the Brazilian coffee. Thank you very much, Bruno, again, and John. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, I, we have a question uh, by New Jacobs. Uh, you kind of answer a little bit of it, but I think you you might contribute a little more. And I would suggest that Vanusia uh, uh, mention it as well, uh, her, her view on the subject. Given that so many coffee farmers are smallholders and not necessarily wealthy, how do they access the developments in agrotechnology that enable them to produce more sustainability? Federal or state aid programs, CAFE or uh, BSCA? All of uh, them. All of them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. We, we, uh, we work all time together. All of the federal states and the associations that we have here in Brazil, we are working together in all of these things. And one of the, I think one of the key words uh, for the smallholders in our days, Bruno, it's uh, prosperity. This is what we are looking for, all of them. And we have a very huge uh, network and system of research here in Brazil and also the extension program. Uh, one of the points that it's uh, a priority for us in our sector, I think in all the agribusiness here in Brazil, it's that we don't, do, we don't do research by research. We do the research to put in the field. And then we need to apply this research in the field. Um, there is no sense to have just a book uh, in some place. And uh, with this, uh, all of the researchers that we have in, in this area here in Brazil, and we are one of the most developed uh, country in coffee researchers in the world, 
uh, the majority of them, they work together with the producers to put in place and to apply their uh, findings uh, in the field all time. Great, this is amazing. It's, it's very good to see that the coffee uh, culture and the coffee economy complex is working so hard to improve quality and also to improve the, the life of people. I would highlight uh, a few informations of Marco's presentation. Uh, first of all, half of the production of coffee in Brazil is consumed by the internal market. So we drink around 20 million bags if I got the right number. This is quite a lot of coffee, right? Uh, so we have a situation where it, it's like half and half. Uh, half of the, of the production goes to the internal market and half goes to the international market. So this is a way also for, of having some hedge on, on, on the adventures of the market, including times like pandemics. I understand, I had the impression that people drink more coffee during the pandemic because people to be at home uh, and having easy access to try their own coffee Last year, we even had a, a video uh, teaching Americans how to prepare coffee Brazilian style uh, by a barista that was chosen by BSCA. And this is very nice. Uh, so I'd like some comments on uh, your impressions uh, of the impact of the pandemic on the trading of coffee, Marcos. Can you explore a little bit more about that? Of course, Bruno. Now, actually, we exported 44.7, I think we consume in 2021, I think 65, ah. 70 percent. Oh. It's a reasonable statistics. Of course, it depends on the year, but it's a reasonable statistics. I think this pandemic period, it's, it was difficult for all the countries in the world. It's, it was very difficult in Brazil in the same way. But agribusiness in Brazil, we are very organized. When we analyze our exports, soybean, coffee, uh, corn, and we Brazil deal very well, manage the crisis very well. Uh, Vanusa mentioned our research, our, the, the farmer in Brazil is very efficient. The segments work together and they're very close. Because of that, the IPEP, the transfer price is so high. Because of that, we are close, we're efficient. In Brazil, there are future contracts that works very well. If there is something in the exchange trade, the mercantile or the Something that is very good in the moment, the farmers in Brazil sell millions of bags. So in the consumption approach, we note that uh, decreased the consumption, uh, how do I say, out home, yeah, the, 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 the different market, the cafeterias, and it's decreased in the notes in the statistics. But at home, it increased. Coffee is our partner during our job with our family. We focus more. It's uh, it's very clear. It don't, it's, that's a difference how it sells. When we analyze USA, important 10% less. It's affect the statistics. But according to International Coffee Organization, the world will increase 1.9% this season. Decrease 0.3%, now you increase 1.9%. Hubble Bank and the other consultants and companies are analyzing the same way. Our consumption in the world will reach 169, 170 million bags. So co coffee is resilient. Even the international crisis in a monetary financial crisis in 2009, 2010, and 11, it was all decreasing and then recover and still growing. For Brazil, it represents 40% of the market, 40. If you want to be 40% in the next years, you have to increase, but you increase it with sustainability as we mentioned in social pillar, uh, environmental pillar and the economic pillar. Amazing, amazing. Uh, if I so can I got, add, uh, uh, Yes, Anuza, sure, sure. Uh, I think during this uh, pandemic time, we, we have two, two chains, uh, the replacement of channels, and we have a huge increase of the e-commerce now we have Amazon, for example, with one of the examples of uh, a huge sales of coffee. And uh, then uh, we have the e-commerce increasing in, instead of the coffee shops that unfortunately needed to be closed for many months in worldwide. And the second point, it's the way to prepare the coffees. 
there was a replacement from the espressos that we used to have outside of uh, out of home to the filter coffees that we teach the people to prepare, and then you can buy these coffees uh, in the in the supermarkets, or you can uh, get these coffees and order these coffees from the from the e-commerce stores, the marketplace, and things like that. And also the coffees that are more convenient to, to prepare, that is the capsules and the instant coffees. Instant uh, we, yes, yes, we had a huge increase about, uh, for the capsules and the instant coffees, the soluble coffees in the world. So it's I guess easy to prepare. Yeah, sure. So I guess the industry has something to say about that, right? So yeah. I think it's time to give the floor to the former uh, president of this very Brazil US Chamber of Commerce, uh, current president of Companhia Cacique de Café Soluvio, and president of the Cacique International USA, my friend Sergio Pereira. Sergio, the floor is you. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the Consulate General, uh, the Council Maria Nazaré and Bruno for your leadership. I would like to thank John also and the Brazilian American Chamber of Commerce for providing the resources, the platform. Uh, I must say in my 40, 17 years uh, in New York, this is the first time that I have the chamber sponsoring an event of only coffee. So congratulations, John and Bruno, congratulations for having organized this event for us. Uh, I'm a president of Companhia Cacique de Café Soluvio. We are the largest uh, producer, the largest exporter of instant coffee. But as Bruno mentioned, uh, I elected to present a view of the soluble coffee industry, which is uh, one of the segments of the coffee business. You saw with Marcos the big picture. You saw the 40 million bags, the total exports of green coffee. Uh, you heard and you saw in the presentation uh, of Vanusia, uh, a specialty market, which is the specialty coffees that we sell worldwide, uh, which we believe we will exchange some views, Vanusi, before the, the seminar. Uh, we expect that it's about 10% today. It's a growing market. I would say is one of the fastest uh, growing market uh, segment in the coffee industry. And now let's talk a little bit about the uh, almost forgotten industry, which is instant coffee. There are a few companies in Brazil that produce instant coffee with very heavy investments in plant and facilities. And I would like to share with you my screen. Uh, I hope you are all seeing it. And uh, I will make a brief presentation first and then uh, we'll all be open for questions if you have a further question on this. As I mentioned, uh, I would like to present a view of the industry as a whole. I want to thank the Brazilian Instant Coffee Association, ABICS. They have done a tremendous job in promoting instant coffee in Brazil and uh, promoting it worldwide. So uh, if we go into today's event, which I think is uh, the first event, as I mentioned, in the history of the chamber only for coffee, uh, we are celebrating the world's drink, the coffee uh, as a whole. But here we are talking about instant coffee. How can we create domestic and export values and opportunities? A brief review of what is instant coffee. Is, um, instant coffee is a product made with 100% coffee. And we have a few varieties that I would like to present to you. The most traditional one, which you have been a customer during your whole life is the spray dried instant coffee. It's a powder that it's very convenient to use as a beverage. It can be agglomerated, which is a second step in the production where we change the powder into granules and we create an agglomeration process with a more sophisticated, more elegant product and is still maintaining the delightful aroma and the flavor of the best coffees. More recently, we came with freeze-dried product, which is the same instant coffee using a different drying process 
in which the water of the cough extract is removed during a sublimation process using high vacuum chambers at temperatures below 50 degrees centigrade. These uh, minus 50 degrees centigrade, I'm sorry. And this preserves even more the flavor, the aroma, and the body of the coffee, keeping it intact. Two subproducts that are not well known is the coffee extract, which you may have seen in many supermarkets as a uh, ready to drink beverage, which is used in nine, 10, 12% in all these ready to drink beverage and the coffee oil, which is a specialty product used by the food industry or even by the fragrance industry with the fragrance of coffee beans uh, uh, extracted from 100% coffee using a mechanical cold pressing process. What are we looking in instant coffee? We are looking for diversity. And the industry is focusing in the know-how to create a diversity of blends, diversity of flavors and aroma. In other words, what we are looking for are products customized to our customers' needs. The types and grades of instant coffee that we produce in the instant coffee industry are the same that are exported for Brazil. Arabica green coffee and Robusta green coffee. With these two types of coffee blended together, we can have through the production process, an excellent product differentiated one from the other and also make it the conventional instant coffee. We are a very small industry. We are only six plants. And in the next presentation, I will ask another line because Cacique has a second plant here in the state of Espírito Santo, which is being commissioned this month. So we, we have two facilities in Brazil, but we are only six companies that are dedicated for the production of instant coffee. But even this is small, number of industry, we have the world largest manufacturing capacity. We produce 133,000 tons of instant coffee per year. That's 5.7 million bags. Let's put in perspective, Brazil total production in an average year is 60 million bags. We export 40 million bags as Marcus showed quite well. And uh, Bruno, has mentioned the number of 20 million bags, which is about what Brazil consumes. So if you talk about total production of Brazil, we are a little bit less than 10%. If you consider the exports, we are about 9.5%. But we are also in the domestic market and we are growing in Brazil. If you look into this graph, you are going to see that we went from 2016 from less than 19 million kilos, 19,000 tons, to over 21.5 thousand tons of consumption in the domestic market of Brazil. So we are not one of the biggest consumers of instant coffee, but we are a very important uh, market. Just to give a picture, when we talk about exports of uh, instant coffee from Brazil, uh, and I'm showing the five big industries that export, I have excluded in this chart, the intra-company exports, let's say uh, Nestle exporting for Nestle, but taking only the producers that export to third parties. Cacique is 45% of the total exports uh, of instant coffee from Brazil. And we are the largest instant coffee manufacturer and exporter. If you look at the industry as a whole, we export to 110 
countries worldwide in five continents. We are, Kasiki, we are in at least 70 of these countries. Going back to the numbers that I just mentioned, instant coffee, total 5 million bags, and, and uh, the exports of 4.1, as I said, about 10% of total exports, and domestic consumption of about 0.9%. If you look into a chart of the total exports, we have green coffee, Arabica, 79%, Robusta, 11%, and instant coffee, about 9%, 9.5, 9.2. We use 80% of our coffee, our Robusta type, and the 20% Arabica. Robusta is grown mainly in the Espírito Santo state and Rondonia. So we are, as an industry, big supporters of the farmers in these both states. So going back to the basics, I like it, Vanusa, very much when you presented Brazil, the coffee nation. And I would complement Brazil, the instant coffee nation as well. We are the world leaders. And here I'm taking the 2020 figures because I wanted to present some other countries. In 2020, we produced 117,000 tons, the 5 million bags that I mentioned. We exported as an industry 95,000 tons. And in the domestic market, we are close to 22,000 tons of instant coffee. If we put this in perspective, in the left side, you have the largest producers. In Brazil has a 13.1 share. We are by, by far the largest producer of instant coffee, Mexico being the second, India, South Korea, German, United Kingdom, and Vietnam as a producer. In the right-hand side, you are going to see the exporters. And here, Brazil has 14.4. Interesting, the biggest instant coffee producer is also the biggest exporter. With 80,000 tons, we export. And this data, because I had to get some other countries, is not the same as I presented before. This is two years behind. Uh, interesting to see, Germany is the second largest exporter with production of only 45,000 tons, number five in producer, Germany exports 68,000 tons. And this means that Germany is buying their instant coffee elsewhere, including from Brazil. Of course, you don't see Mexico in the right-hand side because although they produce 67,000 tons, they are a big consumer of instant coffee. We heard a lot today about sustainability, about traceability, talked by the BSCA and by the Secafe. Well, we are also worried about all this. And if we take the industry as a whole, we have all possible certificates, the Rainforest Alliance, organic, different types of organic for Brazil, for the USA, for the Europe, IBD, for Japan, we have the kosher certificate. All industries are kosher certified, are halal certified. We have all SGS requirements because we supply to the packers worldwide that will place this instant coffee already processed in the supermarkets. So we have all the certifications for the export and for the consumers in all 110 countries where we operate as an industry. What's the methodology that we have evaluate instant coffee? Well, number one, instant coffee is different from roast and ground. So we ask our consumers, do not compare what you are drinking as an instant coffee with the coffee that you percolate at home. It's a beverage, it's a coffee beverage, but we are looking for different flavors. We are looking for different ways that the consumer can have a beverage that is pleasant, that has the aroma and that's satisfying. We try to convey this information to buyers and to consumers. 
For this reason, the Association of Instant Coffee Manufacturers have started a campaign under the theme Explore and Enjoy. In Portuguese, Crie e Curta. We want the consumers to create their own recipes, to create their own products, to really look for something that is pleasant to, the, to their taste. So the intensity of attributes, the differentiation that instant coffee can give to the consumer is very important for all of us in the in instant coffee industry. And on top of all this, we add value to the, to the commodity. <clears throat> we add value to the green coffee exporting a product and producing a product that is different and that brings Brazil to the forefront of the instant coffee business. So how do we see coffee and instant coffee today and in the future? Well, it's practical. You don't need a brewing equipment. As a matter of fact, many years ago, our founder and the president, Mr. Coimbra, used to say, how much easier can it be if you can prepare a nice beverage and you just need fire, pot, and water? It's so simple. And that's what you need for instant coffee. Just fire, a little pot, and a little bit of water, and a beautiful beverage, instant coffee. You can use in three in one. You can make a different uh, beverage using instant coffee. The prices are competitive. There is no waste. Everything that you have in a jar, in a tin, you can use. Furthermore, instant coffee, it's an entry door into coffee. So here we are working hand to hand with BSCA, with Secafe, because we are opening markets. Markets that never drank coffee, tea countries, tea country drinking markets, the emerging market, all these instant coffee is an easy open door. Look at what happened in Japan and Russia and all Eastern European countries that had no tradition in drinking coffee and that today are a very important consumers starting with instant coffee. We see in the future, the industry improving the quality. Raw material and technology has evolved. A specialty instant coffee. It's a segment that's growing considerably Instant coffee with origins. You can see today in the Brazilian market, instant coffee from the mountains of Minas, from the mountains of Espírito Santo. And you can make your beverage, you can select your beverage using the best coffee through production in a process that is very sophisticated. Again, retaining customers and adding value to the coffee commodity. Just to give you an idea, what is an investment for production of instant coffee? It's a big plant, like you can see here in this picture, or the new facility that we are just opening in Linhares two years ago. That's what you saw there. And today, that's what you can see in our new plant just under commission in Linhares. Behind all these, you have a very involving process, which I'm not going to go into details because we are going to show a very short movie.
was very nice. Uh, it is possible to see the commitment of the industry. Uh, I think I think it's freezing. Is it? Oh, it's back. Okay. Okay. Let me close it here. Thank you very much, Bruno. I just want you to have this overall view of what is instant coffee. Next time you go to a supermarket, don't bypass the instant coffee section. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sergio. Uh, there was one thing I used to, to uh, see a lot when I was working in Brasilia in my previous uh, functions. It was that sometimes the government negotiates market access a lot, but then you go to the supermarket and you don't see your product there. So uh, we used to talk about, I think you, most of you have already heard this, this expression, talk about the supermarket access. So uh, by taking some certifications and by improving power of the brands, then you can reach the last mile, you can reach the final consumer and be known as, as someone relevant to this business. Uh, this is also one of the questions that I'd like to, to, to put for reflection here. Uh, I see that we are running a little bit out of time. So this will be a little bit uh, sort of a, a, a ending to this, to this meeting. Uh, I was reading a book two years ago uh, around uh, the world in six, six drinks. We'll talk about beer, wine, tea, uh, liquor, coffee, and Coca-Cola. Well, the chapter about coffee uh, only had one mention to Brazil. It was only a small footnote. You tell all the story of how coffee was found in Yemen, uh, in Ethiopia, and, and, and brewed in Yemen, and went to Asia, and then to Europe, and then to Brazil, and that was it. So uh, Brazil cannot be a footnote on the history of coffee. And this is something that uh, we want to change. We want uh, the big public in the central countries like America or in Europe, we want them to know that the Brazilian coffee is good, is socially sustainable, environmentally sustainable, and also good to drink. It's a good product. It's something nice to, to, to have in your morning, afternoon, during the day. Uh, yesterday, we had a big action in the Botanical Garden in New York uh, with a vendor that bought some uh, uh, grains from Brazil, roasted and grinded and prepared everything for us. And the main question was, was, where can I find it? Where can I buy this coffee again? The coffee was so good and everybody was so happy. And the question was, where is this coffee? So what I, uh, this is my last appointment as a diplomat in the consulate of New York. I'm going back to Brazil next week. So I think if I had to have a, a farewell address, uh, my farewell address would say, let's be more visible, okay? New York, is the is is the is the place to be seen, and the Brazilian coffee must be seen here. All right. I thank you very much Vanusia, Marcos, and Sergio for the wonderful uh, presentations they delivered today. I thank you very much John uh, for the support as always. I thank everybody who been together with us during uh, uh, this uh, meeting. And I hope we can sit around a good cup of coffee and have some more conversation about that in the future. Thank you very much. Well, that was excellent. Bruno, almost as good as the cafezinho I'm drinking right now. Uh, thank you, Bruno. We wish you all the blessings uh, in your new position when, as you go back to Brazil. Thank you very much, Vanusia, Marcos, and Sergio for a first-rate discussion. And thank you all for joining. Our next event will take place tomorrow, Friday, the International uh, Coffee Day, October 1st at 5 p.m. PM when we host a reception uh, with IPTI and a discussion on how to end the poverty gap at the Chamber offices at 485 Madison. This is by invitation only, unfortunately. Uh, our next uh, event after that is October 7th, our uh, um, economic uh, uh, conference, our, which we do every fall around the IMF World Bank meetings. So that will be at 1 p.m. On, on Thursday, October 7th. Again, thank you all for coming, especially our members. For those who are not members, please watch the brief video that follows and we invite you to join the chamber. In the meantime, stay healthy and in good spirits. Mm -hmm.